Ladies and gentlemen, Kei Kim here. Uh, welcome to the daily update. Hope you guys are having a good day today. I am recording this intro day. Uh, as I record this video, market should be open for another four hours, right? So market has been open, let's see, about two hours and a half at this point. So market should be open for another four hours, four hours to go until close as I record this video and I am recording this intro day. Keep in mind, um, I got things to take care of later on, so I don't think I can be able to do that later. So I thought I would, you know, push this out early, let you guys know what I think about the market. And so let's kind of follow up with what we've been talking about on the last night's video and see what we can expect going forward here. So looking at the S&P, S&P is currently down, uh, again, as I record this video, S&P is down about 0.1%. I do believe that the NASDAQ is currently up about 0.6, 0.5%. Everything else is down 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, something like that. So it's a mild down day today with the tech stocks um, being up today. So, um, so looking at this, in the micro term picture, just looking at last three hours of price action here. So you can see it looks like we saw a slight gap down here. So this is where it closed yesterday and it opened here and looks like there was some attempt to push to the downside. It came back up and we're holding this level. We talked about specifically, we talked about this level yesterday, right? The gap area and the uh, rising pivot. This is a level that we focused on yesterday and that's where we're kind of slowing down, no surprise there. Only thing we're trying to figure out though is that, well, is this level gonna hold or are the bears gonna push even more? So um, right now, my short-term moving average is declining, the price is trading below it. So. Uh, we want to give benefit of the doubt to the sellers in the micro to mic. If I want to be really precise with my sentiment, we want to give um, benefit of doubt to the sellers micro to short term, micro to short term. So, and I, I try to be as precise as I can be, but when it comes to short term, just flat out short term, I think I will give it more neutral actually just because we don't know how this market is going to behave uh, in that rising pivot. And that's a pretty strong pivot there, right? Because every time we saw this market retesting that level, we did see a bounce, right? So um, that's why I think that's why um, I want to be more neutral in the short term, just flat out short term, but micro to short term. When I say micro to short term, I'm talking um, just maybe looking at last four or five days, uh, maybe a week trading sessions, not a couple of weeks, right? I wanna give benefit of the doubt to the sellers uh, that you know we have that my short-term moving average is currently declining. So I mean, I think at least if the buyers wanna see any kind of uh, sentiment improvement in the short to mid, uh, in the micro to mid short term, uh, buyers will wanna reclaim that short-term moving average and you wanna see that short-term moving average start to rise back up with something like this right here, something like that. And so um, let's kind of zoom out a little bit more and kind of look at the midterm sense here. So if we look at the midterm and let's, right there. So when we look at the midterm here, and again, we've been talking, it's, under, it's, it's very important that we understand the micro term which is just what's happening the last couple days and the short term, which is what's happening in the last, I don't know, week or two. And then the midterm, what's happening in the last month, maybe two, right? So that we understand the short term, midterm. And obviously I, you know, I, I, I uh, review the long term on the weekend videos on Friday nights. So looking at the midterm, obviously we're still in that vicinity where we wanna favor the buyers right? Because we have this cultivation of higher high here. And a lot of times when the higher high is cultivated, market pulls back to uh, establish that higher low. And that's what we're trying to figure out is that where's that higher low is going to be, right? We made a nice move and we're pulling back. And what we're trying to figure out is this going to be that higher low we've been looking for before market 
pre, you know, resuming to the upside, making new all-time high, potentially going after 370. Or is there going to be further decline uh, might be in store? And that's what we're trying to figure out, right? Is it going to be maybe going back down to 349, maybe 350 before this market gets back up? Because we do need that higher low. We have to understand that you have to learn to embrace the pullbacks because uptrend does not get developed without that higher low. Most people don't realize this. And everybody always wants the market. If you're long, you want market to go up forever. If you're short, you want market to go down forever, right? And that's not how it works in reality. Market cannot go straight up. Market cannot go straight down. Market is going to have its ups and downs. And we have to figure out what trend we are in. Because market can also have ups in a downtrend, but it followed by lower low, lower high, lower low, right? And in an uptrend, it goes up, it comes down, followed by low, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high. Never, like, never in this pretty manner, but essentially that's how the market moves. It's going to have its ups and downs. It's going to cultivate that low or high. So what we're trying to figure out is not are we going to make lower low and lower high like we're in a downtrend in the midterm. Because in the midterm, we've established the fact that we're not in a downtrend. Right? This low, this low. That's not lower low, that's equal lows. However, this high, this high, definitely a higher high, right? So we're looking for that higher low. We're trying to figure out, is it 356 or 350, 340? See, that we do not know. So I think as of today, we are holding this level. I'm not sure how it's going to play out throughout the remainder of this day. You know, we may break below it, right? Or we may push higher towards the end of the day. But for now, as I, for now... As I record this video with the data that is at hand, we are holding this level, right? Right above that 355 gap here. That gap is technically still a little bit open here. As you can see, there's a long lower wick, but it didn't come all the way back down to fill the gap. So there's still gaps still open. Rising pivot is there. And that gap not getting completely filled, that actually kind of favors the buyers in the short to micro term there. My midterm moving average is still rising, right? So we want to give benefit of the doubt to the buyers in the midterm, obviously. Um, you know, so that's in the short term. Like I said, I'm more neutral in the short term, but micro to short term, I'm more bearish. Just, just very, very short term as far as the sentiment is concerned. Let's check out that oscillator and see what it, uh, you know, what we can make of this market here so that oscillator as we talked about yesterday this 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 uh level is now broken that support is broken so what the buyers needed though is that push right away um early in the in the hours but what it did is it was actually negative and we're just hanging around so that pressure that's building here just push it right below this actually this is actually even though we're not seeing price coming back down much lower because price is pretty much the, you know moving sideways this is actually better for the bears because if we were to find support here again and we start to see this thing my oscillators are going back up bulls gonna you know have tremendous confidence and, and it's gonna keep bring it back up because you know that they're gonna continue to um be part of that momentum by breaking below this support here on my isolator basically what the buy bears are doing is bears are actually kind of nullifying neutralizing that momentum here so uh we're now getting near to that oversold vicinity here right so we're trying to figure out okay so if we go back a little bit you can see when the you know there was that support also when that gets broken we usually find support somewhere in that vicinity so bears do have a little bit of room left so they can actually push a little lower. And I think that's why we are holding. So that's a little bit of conf uh, conflict going on here. So we are holding this pivot. Mark is realizing this is kind of an important pivot, right? 355-ish level. But the momentum isn't there, right? So the momentum isn't there. So bulls have a hard time trying to push it up because the momentum isn't there. You see how it was a, it was a good push here? Because there's that, even though... This thing came down. There was that push. We held this level. So that's what we saw about two days of bullish run to the upside, clearing this neckline, right? Right now, even though we're on this pivot, and that's a pretty strong pivot, it's having a hard time at this point. So 
either bulls bulls need to get this market moving with some kind of big gap up or some sort of big move if bear if bulls let bears hang around here i think there's a good chance bears can bring it back down what bulls don't want to see is bears gapping it down the best case scenario for the bears is that gapping it down beneath 353 353 352 we do have midterm moving average hovering in that vicinity so that's going to be a little bit of wild card that's going to be a little bit of support there but we got that rising pivot we got that gap support that that thing could make things hectic for the also for the bears right so right now what we're dealing with is bulls losing momentum so they they're they're struggling to bring it up bears basically neutralize that momentum and trying to bring it down but also we got these supports that not allowing it happen so now and this is when you see these kind of pause days right kind of grinding day all day market is not moving anywhere because there's that kind of conflict going on right that's why we're seeing this very lethargic movement all throughout the today i i, I don't i won't be surprised it's kind of like this throughout the day today and then what's going to happen is probably tomorrow morning either we see a, some abrupt sell-off in the morning or gap down from the bears or we see some abrupt gap up like you know buyers did and a lot of times what buyers like to do is maybe end the day so if we do see end of the day ramp like this one right you see that um candle there so if there's some kind of end of the day ramp and then close the close the last hour strong there's a good chance buyers can also gap it up right but if we kind of close weak kind of like lethargic that's gonna favor the bears next day right so uh you know let's see how we place out throughout this day today right and i think we might have a better idea where the market is going tomorrow tomorrow's friday so i'll do the uh the market update uh for the weekend analysis i'll kind of go through the more of a long-term uh view of this market i'll go through more uh extensively with the uh, uh, indices look at some bitcoin and gold and things like that so um you know enjoy the rest of this day uh if you're a long-term trader and investor i wouldn't even waste my time i wouldn't even waste your time sitting there and watching this thing just let it be check out the uh check the you know end of the day cult later uh after market close and then face the market tomorrow because it looks like it's gonna be a lethargic day today so um i'll come back for you guys tomorrow night and good luck trading tomorrow